Massive delays due to the bad weather in other cities are affecting all flights out of Chicago. Colleen has been called to gate B-15. Seems one of the passengers hasn't been on his best behavior. Okay, who's the one who keeps screaming and swearing? Okay, okay. Step back, sir, right now. Step back now. Okay, I'm gonna tell you one time that that is not appropriate and it's not acceptable. Then okay. be professional, okay. be professional. Sir, I will be pro as professional with you as you are with me. To stand there and scream and swear at these people is not acceptable. Four o'clock, I've been here. Okay. Don't tell me the guy behind me is more important than me. Please don't tell me that. I'm not telling you anything, sir. What I'm telling you is that your, your demeanor right now with these employees oh. is not acceptable. Oh. Say anything to them and they get pissed? Okay, step back, sir, and I'll find out so what's going on, let's and then talk. we will talk, talk professionally, okay? But you will Slamming. not you will not keep screaming and swearing. Oh, screaming. That's okay. cool. I didn't say a word okay. enough. Step step back for a minute, sir, until you're calm enough to talk to me, okay? So this is talk. Colleen. It's seven o'clock at Midway, and St. Louis passenger Bill Gutweiler waits his turn. Okay, sir, do you want to try to speak to me now? Lamp. Okay. Couldn't be more professional. I want to know okay. when I was here at four o'clock why I'm not on an airplane. You tell me. Okay. I, my understanding is you think that you should take priority over the other people Says that I've been are here. here at four o'clock. Okay. Yes, I do. Sir, everybody was delayed today because of the weather. You are what not. What weather? Okay. Do you see any storm? Okay. If you keep shouting at me, sir, our conversation's going to be over. You see I'm not. Storm? Not raising my voice you to see you. A storm? Sir, you're screaming and swearing I at these swear employees. Anybody. You you screamed and sworn at me since I walked up here, sir. It's not professional. It's not appropriate. Then and if it can, if it continues, you will not travel with us at all. Back at Midway, it's more bad news for Bill. Okay, folks, flight 1273 to St. Louis is now full. Once again, if you were trying to go on flight 1273, service to St. Louis, that flight is now full. Okay, Mr. Gutweiler, this flight is full. You're gonna have to go to B18 if you'd like to try to get on that list. Try. You're gonna try to get on that flight? Try. Yes, sir. If your demeanor is the same at that gate, I will deny you boarding. There is no reason for you to treat the employees that way. You cannot behave at the next gate the way so, that you have just you behaved. you have the right to do this to me? Sir, I'm sorry. Are you in a flight? Sir, I'm sorry you're frustrated, and I'm sorry that the weather has inconvenienced so many people. Okay. Do you see sir. it raining? Do you see it raining? Sir, we're under a weather advisory and we have been all day. Okay. What weather? I'll try to call the ramp just to slash it. Deny him boarding, okay? okay? He's done. All right. Okay? Oh, I gotta see if he's I'll be right there. At gate B-18, Colleen arrives to find that Bill Gutweiler has actually been given a seat on a flight to St. Louis. Even after my conversation with him, he's come down to the next gate and actually done the same thing to the, to the ladies at the gate here. So I really think that it's best that he not travel tonight. Mr. William Gutweiler, please bring your flight attendant call button passenger William Gutweiler. Do you see him? Colleen is adamant Bill should not be allowed to fly. I need you to step off the aircraft, sir. Sir! I need you to step off the aircraft, sir. Because I need you to step off the aircraft. Do you have a reason? Yes, I do. Excuse me. Excuse me. Sir, your ticket has been refunded. Your behavior continued at the next gate, and there was no reason for it. I can't I allow you to home. I understand that, sir. So you does everyone else. You understand nothing. Sir, I've refunded your ticket. I've refunded your ticket, sir. I'm sorry. You will not travel with us tonight. You cannot treat the employees treat that way. Treat who? Sir, your ticket has been refunded. I've been on this plane. Sir. How did it bother anybody? Defunded. You're being a jerk about this. I'm denying you boarding, sir. Your behavior at those two gates was not acceptable. I cannot allow you to travel. I'm sorry. You will not travel tonight. I'm sorry. Bill's now going to have to drive home. I'm very unhappy. I mean, I was here at 4 o'clock to get my flight to go home, and now I'm being rejected because, you know what? I stood up for my rights. I stood up for my rights. That's all I did. Back at BWI, Gina gives some bad news to some Buffalo passengers. All right, all passengers, uh, your estimated time of departure is 9.16, and estimated time of arrival into Buffalo is 10.20. We do apologize about the inconvenience, but it is due to weather, and we cannot control the weather, unfortunately. Thank you. 
Mr. Singh is on his way to a friend's wedding and isn't taking the news well. And I missed my dinner. Somebody's home. It's a, it's a, it's a big party. Mm -hmm. I missed my party. Unfortunately, sir, like I was telling you before, when it's due to weather, it's out of our control. I'm the highest that you get, sir. And I'm not going to compensate you when it's a weather delay. There is a manager, but he is tied up at the moment, sir. That's bring him here. Bring him here right now. He, I've, made a, I've made a scene here that he's going to bring him He's tied up at the moment, sir. I don't care. Bring him. Many of our manager here. OK, they're going to tell you the same thing I'm telling you. That's why. I don't, I don't care. You just go, go over there. That's I what want, I'm trying I want, to say. I want to talk to you. You, want me to be com you want me to compensate you because the flight's delayed due to weather, and I'm not going to do that. We don't fly you, in unsafe that conditions. That manager. He manager is tied up at the moment, sir. OK, I'll wait for you. Okay, OK, that's fine. I'll call him and tell him that you're going to wait for him. Hey, Craig, Craig, I know you're busy, but can you call me at Charlie 13 when you get a chance? He's upset because it's delayed due to weather and he wants to be compensated. He didn't want to listen to me because he said I'm not compensating him. So he said he was done with me, that he wanted a manager. Back at BWI, Craig arrives at the gate to speak to Mr. Singh. Now, what you're saying is, is that you're going up there for a wedding. Is the, when is the wedding? Six o'clock. This is six, seven, eight, nine. Nine o'clock tonight. Right, eight, nine. You know, but right now I'm, I'm like at ten o'clock. So nobody's over there. Okay. So, so what you're trying to decide is if you really want to go up to Buffalo or not. Is, is that what your the question is? That's not question. I just want some kind of conversation. I, go, I might go over there and converse with the family a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. They are friends. And uh, I want some kind of conversation. Some kind of conversation. Well, so be because this was related to the weather delay, we don't, we don't provide any type of compensation here in the airport. Do you want to do anything? I, I want to cancel the ticket, my ticket too. Well, if you'd like to cancel, we can give you your money back if you'd like to, you know, do that. Right. And I understand since you're missing the wedding. And you're going to help me like anything? I, I, there's not anything we can provide you because this type of a delay, no, sir. I, I don't want, I don't want, there's no responsible person to, to talk, and you're not responsible either. You said you're a manager, but you're mm -hmm. not a responsible manager. You're talking like a, you're talking like a, just like a pass boy. I don't want to deal with this. I'm, I'm manager too. I don't, I don't deal with it like that. He, he's not a manager. He tell me he's a manager, but he's not a manager. He's just talking, just like a And the other people, I don't see anybody responsible. I don't think he's a responsible man to talk to somebody. You're not helping me. Just go ahead. Just go. I don't want you to talk to you. Go ahead. Go. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry you feel that way. And Go ahead, sir. If we can help you with something, I apologize. Else, let us know. I don't, I'm not a bad person. I'm a good person. I, 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 just want you, I just want you to get out from here. It, 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 uh, not get out. I'm sorry. Just walk away. That's it. I don't want to talk to you. All right. Now give me the number of president of the company. Number. Mr. Singh is obviously very upset. He's got an important meeting to go to. He's got a wedding going on in Buffalo, and he's looking for some kind of a gratification for, for this. And, and unfortunately, at this point, we can't uh, offer him that. After all the commotion, the weather calms down, and so does Mr. Singh. He boards the delayed flight and heads to Buffalo. Storms are brewing at Chicago Midway, causing delays on all flights. Colleen and her team brace themselves for a long night ahead. Okay. We're now delayed across the board. Let's go, troops. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Let's go get them. Come on, James. Hey. I told you you weren't going home. Hey, I'm here. First up is delayed flight 438 to Long Island. The flight is running one hour behind. Passenger John Freed called the airline before heading to the airport, but wasn't told about the delay. Why didn't they tell us? Well, we, uh, the time you called, it was probably all right. How about if I call right now and I don't ask? Will they tell me without my asking? Uh, I don't know. You can try. I'm doing that right now. As okay. you can see, okay. I have the 800 iFly SWA number. Yes, um, flight 438, is the flight wide open? 24 seats available. Is the flight on time? Uh, do you think maybe you should have told me that before I specifically asked you? No, you, you have no obligation to tell me. 
Well, thank you. As you saw, until I asked the question, they didn't tell me anything, absolutely nothing, and the flight is delayed an hour at, right now officially. Thank you. John's flight leaves an hour later, but Colleen fears the worst is yet to come. In Chicago, radar screens reveal the weather shows no sign of letting up and tempers are starting to flare. You all have to stay in one line for me, folks. Just take it easy. I'll take it easy when you guys give a standard answer okay. from what the lady said there and what you're saying here. We're going to set up a love cart. Provo can bring up some snacks, and Chris is going to grab ice off the aircraft. This is a love cart. When we start experiencing weather delays like we're going to in the next hour or so, we're going to have two and three and four hour delays. We'll uh, provision some of the gates so that the uh, customers can get some snacks, get a soda. Passenger Jason Jordan's inbound flight was delayed because of weather, and he's missed his connection to Cleveland. People in St. Louis are like, why didn't you just stay on the Jason, flight tomorrow? I can rebook you for tomorrow morning. There's no other flights. I can't switch airlines or go on another, another flight later. We don't interline with other airlines, Jason. Uh, I have no money for a okay. hotel room. Well, I, I don't know. My mom is, is, is sick with cancer. Back at Midway, it looks like Jason will be spending the night in Chicago. How am I going to get to Cleveland? What is the easiest way tomorrow for me to morning, get to Cleveland? Tomorrow morning. I can put you on the first flight tomorrow morning, which is 7.15. There's also an 8 o'clock. Do you want the first flight, 7.15? Of course I do. If I want to leave tonight, I would most likely want the first flight tomorrow morning. You're not helping me, really, by telling You know what I mean? Jason, you're doing, you're doing what you have to do. For tomorrow morning. I know, but you're doing what okay. you have to do anyway. You're not, you're Jason, not necessarily you helping with my problem. Okay. I understand that. OK. I understand that, 100%. I'm sorry, Jason. I really I, am. I'm, I'm sure, but sorry is not going to help me get there any sooner. I appreciate it. I'm sorry. Did we hear from you again? I didn't I anticipate any of this happening, so I didn't. I don't have the funds available to be able to do anything else other than wait for my flight in the morning, and hopefully I'll be able to get on then. It's a weather day. Weather day in Chicago. In Houston, the airline is feeling more at the mercy of the elements than usual with heavy rain and frequent lightning. A fire warning on a plane bound for Oklahoma sends fire trucks to the gate. I just rolled up and there was a fire indicator light on board the aircraft, so they've deplaned everybody so that our maintenance folks can take a look at it and see if it's just an adjustment they need to make or if they actually need to take the aircraft out of service. Okay, apparently they are taking it out of service now, which means that they're going to take it over to the hangar to repair what it is that needs to be repaired. They're going to bring a new plane over here so that we can still get these folks out and on their way as soon as possible. It's left to Cindy to deliver the bad news. Priority. As you can see, they are pushing that airplane away from gate number 41 at this time. They are officially taking that one out of service. We should have another one coming over to accommodate gate 41 for flight number 36. Backs it off, leaves on, hydraulics on. All right. Minus 390, taxi to the hangar, over. Back at Houston, mechanics Sohail and Yoda ride to the rescue with a new plane. Original. The delayed passengers board plane number two. Welcome aboard. But does lightning ever strike twice? We're back. <laughs> Two planes later, the unlucky passengers are wondering if they will ever leave Houston. We had a lightning strike, so we're just taking this plane to the hangar, like I did the last one. While the passengers in Houston wait for another replacement plane, the mechanics head off with damaged plane number two. I'll take it in the hangar and start doing their inspection. Uh, we're coming out in the aircraft 390, so... See this, this little burn mark there? You see that little burn mark right there? Safety, it's all about safety. And we have all the way down here, if you can see that. So, up here, 
Yeah, so we have to check the whole aircraft, make sure there's nothing else is damaged. And once we find it, they'll clean it up and work on it, the hangar guys, and then they'll call us, take it out, bring it over the hangar. Back in the terminal, getting off the ground hinges on a plane coming from New Orleans. Estimated 8.20 departing now. Stranded passenger E.R. Buxton has reasons of his own for getting home tonight. I come out of New Orleans, I'm going to Oklahoma City. I ain't been home 22 days, so I got to go home and see what I can do. I got cattle I got to take care of in Oklahoma. That's where I'm headed. I'm going to get a beer. There's plenty of time for a beer as the weather plays yet another trick. Flight number 1276 to Oklahoma City. That flight is on a will advise, which means that that plane is stuck in New Orleans because of the fog here in Houston. In Houston, after enduring a fire alert, a lightning strike, and some fog, what's next for the Oklahoma passengers? Is it turning? Is it turning? Don't clap yet. It might not be you. Make your announcement. Sub please announce the arrival of flight number 1040. The plane has pulled up to the gate. The plane has pulled up to the gate. Thank you. We choose to stop this airline. Go back to flight again. After three weeks on the road and a six-hour delay at the airport, E.R. Buxton is on his way home and just in the nick of time. Hell, I'm going to get some milky when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> There has not been a plane landing in Midway for Southwest since 10.30 this morning. We don't know if anything is going to go out today, and we're still not sure if the airport is going to stay open. Up at Chicago, gate B-17, newlyweds Mike and Wendy Shaw are on their way to Tahiti via L.A. If we don't get on this flight, if it gets canceled for some reason, we're going to be spending our honeymoon in Chicago, where it's negative 10 degrees instead of 90 degrees. So hoping we get out of here, definitely. The inbound canceled, the outbound canceled. So we're getting flights are coming in. So we don't have any planes to take anybody out. Going down to operations to try to get some updated information on what's going on with the weather outside and um, see if we can start getting some aircraft back in here pretty soon. The minute that something gets in the air, then we'll start scheduling. But right now, we're just kind of watching to see what's canceling and what's not. So if it stays the way this is, I doubt we'll have anything, anything today. Having tied the knot less than 24 hours ago, this isn't the ideal start for their life ahead. Right now, there will be no inbounds and no outbounds going out of Midway until at least 6 o'clock. I'm sorry, did you hear our announcement? No. Everything has been canceled up until 6 o'clock today. You guys were going to... We have to get to California. Well, we're a little disappointed with the news, but we're going to do whatever we can to get on any flight that's going going out here. So. Nobody says married life's going to be easy, and then uh, this isn't exactly being that easy <laughs> for us. This is a rough start. If Mike and Wendy don't get on a plane in the next three hours, they'll miss their flight to Tahiti. Back at Chicago Midway, the snow has finally stopped falling. Flights are taking off, but for newlyweds Mike and Wendy, there's little hope their flight will be reinstated. Nikki comes up with a solution. I've been waiting all day to do this. <laughs> and I'm going to switch them out and put them on another flight because um, we want to get them to Tahiti. We got tickets, so we're set to go. It can only get better from this, right? If this is the only bump that's in your marriage and this is how it starts and it gets better from here, then you that's are right. good it can to only go. Get better. That's right. That's we'll have a great story to tell our kids sometime that we almost didn't make it on our honeymoon. But they did, arriving in LA with a half hour to spare. 